Sure good to have you here, saints, and I pray God's love and wonder and favor upon you. That his word would touch you and his spirit would bless you. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, we're going to begin at verse number 13. While you turn there, would you stand? 2 Kings, chapter 6, verse number 13. Hmm. 2 Kings 6.13 And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city both with horses and chariots, and his servants said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you see. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when... They were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw, and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, My father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them, that they may eat and drink and go to their master. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel. Now if we turn to 1 Peter chapter 3. We'll have it there on the screen for you. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 12. We're going to read this verse together. Pastor, this has a tire. Okay, we'll, we'll fix it later. Thank you. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. 1 Peter 3, 12. Mr. Hikes, would you pray for the message and messenger today? Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit and yes, your, presence, your presence here today, Father. We just thank you for the anointing, Father. We have that, we ask for the anointing to be a double portion of yes, the Father today as it delivers the, the word to us. And Father, we just thank you for all the miracles and blessings we're going to experience this week through you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You may be seated, saints. <clears throat> Walking with God is walking in faith. People say quite often that they have trouble walking in faith, but if you're really walking with God and doing what you're supposed to be doing, that is a faith walk. And it takes faith to serve God, obey God, read His Word, and do the things that He wants you to do. You need to trust Him to help you do the things that you can't do on your own. God has instructed you to do some things that you can't do without His help. That's faith walk. Walking with God is victorious. Walking with God is a challenge. Walking with God will stretch you a little bit, bring you out of your comfort zone into the place of his favor and his grace. The flesh, the mind, and the world, they don't understand God's way. They don't, they don't, they don't comprehend it. In fact, they'll, they'll try to sneak up and, 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 and do things their way instead of God's way. You cannot let the flesh win. You cannot let the mind be in control of the things around you. You have to surrender to God and let the spirit man be in charge. 
The recreated heart of man both understands and receives God's miraculous answer. This is the first in the series, Hope from Above. The message today, stop, look, and listen. It's important that we keep our heart, our mind, open to the Word of God. God's Word will direct us, keep us. And when we believe it and obey it, it will establish us in the things eternal. Reading the Bible is the beginning. Believing the Bible is the faith step. And receiving the answer the Bible declares is the breakthrough. So many people say, say I know this is God's Word. Some people even go so far as to say, well, I read and believe what it says. But then out of their mouth comes things contrary to the word of God. Amen. If you really believe the word of God, you will speak according to the word of God. Today is a good day to walk with God. Today is a good day to walk with God. Amen. Number one, stop doing things the world's way. Now that means we have to change our way of thinking, change our way of doing. Amen. Amen. Stop doing things the way the world does them. The first step is to stop doubting. Amen. I don't know about you, but it seems like there is a constant bombardment from the enemy to get us to doubt, to second guess, to question what God has said. Right. And even as a Christian, even someone who spends time in prayer, spends time in the Word, spends time walking in faith, the devil is constantly attacking to get me to, to, to wait, was that God? Wait, is that how God does it? Is God going to do it this time? See, those are all the attacks from the enemy, amen? amen? And I stand on not what the devil is doing, but on what God's word has said. Amen. Because his word never changes. God does not move through doubt, through disbelief, through discouragement, through complaining, or anything else that tears down faith. God moves only when we agree with and speak his word amen. in faith. 2 Corinthians 6.15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and host come past the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? This young protege had spent quite some time with Elisha. He had seen miracle after miracle after miracle. The Syrian king was upset because every time he planned a way to attack Israel, God would tell the prophet Elisha, and Elisha would send word to the king of Israel, and they would escape the attack. This happened not once or twice, but several times. And finally, the king of Syria called in all of his generals, and he said, what's going on? Which one of you is for the king of Israel? Which one of you is telling my secrets? And they said, oh, not so, king, it's not us. But there's a prophet in Israel named Elisha, and whatever you speak privately in your bedchamber, he tells it to the king. And he said, will you go get me, get a big host and go get me this Elisha? Mm -hmm. And so they heard that he was in Dothan. And they sent this big host of an army out, and they surrounded the city. And this is where our text begins. And it says, and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and a host come past the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, the him is Elisha, alas, my master, how shall we do? You see, the young servant was busy looking at what he could see. His faith was based on what he could see with his eyes, not on what God could do. When we catch ourselves looking at the world, looking at the things around us with our eyes, we miss the blessing God has Amen. for us. Amen. Saints, don't murmur, don't complain, don't question God. It says in Philippians 2, 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Oh, I think as Christians, we practice that, our life would change. Amen? Amen. Elijah's protege, he, he wasn't speaking faith. The words that he was speaking were... Laying seed to produce doubt and unbelief. It's especially important that we don't help the enemy by confessing, speaking, or entertaining statements of doubt and unbelief. Amen. Don't speak what the devil wants you to speak. That's right. Don't spend time focused up in the circumstance and in the lies. Amen. Believe God's word even if you're the only one who believes God's word. Right. Agree with God's word if you're the only one. Who agrees with God's word? If nobody stands with you, you stand on God's word. Amen. And God will see you through. 
Amen. says in Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. James 4, 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. James 4, 7 and 8, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. You want your life to change? Get closer to God. You want to get closer to God? Repent. If you want to repent, surrender to the Word, Amen. and your life will be transformed. Amen. Number one, stop doing things the world's way. Number two, look at things God's way. Do you know that God sees different than we see? His whole way of thinking and his whole way of doing is totally different from our way of thinking and doing. We need to line ourselves up and get in, in tune with what God is doing. If you've been around here any, any length of time, you'll know that every now and then I'll, I'll, I'll hit a note for a song just perfect. As, as perfect as I can. But there's other times when our pianist will be playing and hitting the notes and hitting the notes, and I just, I don't get it. I'm not even close. And the more she plays, the, the worse off I get. You know what that means? I'm not in tune with the music. You know what happens with Christians when we're not in tune with God? We keep missing the blessing. Amen. We keep missing what God has for us. It's right there. God has presented it. And we need to focus on what he has. We need to look at things the way God reveals them. We need to look at things with our spiritual eyes. 2 Kings 6, 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I don't know if Elisha saw the horses and chariots of fire or not. Amen. I have wondered that all my life. We get to heaven, I think I'm going to ask him. I don't know if he just knew. Because he'd been serving God for so long that the angelic host was encamped about him. And he didn't need to see or if God had already allowed him to see. The scripture doesn't tell us. It just says he prayed and asked God to open the eyes of the young man so the young man would see. And what did he see? He saw the mountain filled with a host of angels and chariots of fire. Hallelujah. Horses and chariots of fire. We need to pray that God would open our spiritual eyes. And see what God has said about the circumstances we face. See, Elisha knew that God was bigger than the Syrian army. Amen. Elisha knew that he was doing what God wanted him to do. And while he was doing that, God would supernaturally protect him. Yes. We need to know who we are in Christ. Amen. We need to know our authority in Christ. We need to know what blessings we have access to. I wonder if sometimes we miss it because we don't stand in the favor of the grace, of the blessing. Hallelujah. Because we're looking with our natural eyes instead of our spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. The angels of the Lord are encamped about us if we're children of God. The Holy Ghost is within us if we're spirit-filled mm -hmm. children of God. Amen. The devil is on the outside of us. Somebody say amen. 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 And he's a liar. He's a defeated foe. Yeah. When we see things the way God sees things, we're seeing things worth seeing. We're seeing things the right way. We can all of a sudden see what God is doing. And this encourages us. And we're blessed. We look at what God has done. We get ready for him to do it again. If God did it before, God will do it again. Amen. If God answered prayer before, God will do it again. Yeah. If God blessed you before, he'll bless you again. If you are in obedience to his word. Amen. If you are standing upon his promise. Yes. He doesn't bless you on Monday and you go back into your sin bless you the same way on Tuesday. Amen. You have to stay in the word. Stay in the Lord. Stay in the grace. Amen. Hello. So look at what God is about to do. Because his word never changes. And God always fulfills his word. Confess what God has said so you can
can possess what God wants to do. Confess what God has said so you can possess what God wants to do. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him amen, under the glory of God by us. <laughs> Hebrews 6.12 that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. If there's a promise in the word of God for your need, stand on the promise. Amen. If God has talked about the thing that's going on in your life and given a way for a breakthrough, stand on the promise. Look at what God is doing, because the word of God is the same, and therefore it's done, completed, finished in the eyes of the Lord. And if God sees something done, completed, and finished, Shouldn't we see it the same way? Amen. See, I think sometimes what we do is we let time and distraction prevent us from receiving the blessing. All right, preacher. But if God said it, it's done, and if it's done, it's finished, and it's finished, walk in the blessing of it. Amen. You say, but that stretches me a little. Good. Amen. Why don't you stretch in the faith? Amen. Amen. So you grow in the Lord. Amen. Number one. Stop doing things the world's way. Number two, look at things God's way. Number three, listen to what the Bible instructs. Amen. There are some things written in the word of God that we need to hear and put into practice. Yes. We need to listen to God's answer yes. to receive God's answer. So in 2 Kings 6, verse 22, he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive with, the sword, with thy sword and with thy bow? Set bread and water before them. They may eat and drink and go to thy master. So here's, here's the servant of the Lord. Here's Elisha on the mountain. Here's, here's his protege on the mountain. Elisha has prayed that the young man's eyes would be open and, he's, and they're, they're open and he can see all of the, the chariots and horses of fire all around about them. And Elisha prays again that the host of the Syrian army would be smote with blindness. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that the Lord smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Yeah. So here's this whole army of the Syrians, mm -hmm. and they're, they can't see. Mm -hmm. And Elisha walks down to them and says, well, this isn't where you want to go. And this isn't what you need. I'm paraphrasing. Here, follow me and I'll take you to the place that you need to go. They're all blind. Mm -hmm. They don't even know that the man they're after is the man that's leading them. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when the devil does things. All right. He'll get you in a pickle and you won't even know you've been pickled. Right. <laughs> Hello. I mean, it'll be a mess from Messville. And you'll think everything is great and you're sitting in sin. All right. You're outside of God's favor. And the scripture says that Elisha led the host of the Syrian army, led them over to Samaria. Why Samaria? Because that's where the king of Israel happened to be camping. And when they got there, the king of Israel says, Oh, shall I kill him? I mean, you'd kind of think that would be the normal, natural response, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I mean, the best way to get rid of your enemy is kill your enemy, right? Wrong. But that's not the way God does things. Right. He said, would you have killed them if you had captured them in battle? Of course not. We should forgive Set them. Set bread and water in front of them. We should forgive them. And let them eat. And so the Bible says that they did a, a great feast of bread and water and let them eat and sent them home. Amen. Amen. And the scripture says when they got home, they didn't go back and attack Israel no, anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I missed one little important thing. When they got to Samaria, Elisha prayed, Lord, open their eyes that they might see. God didn't leave them blind. No, he didn't. Don't you think if you all of a sudden were blind and you're following this person that you don't know, and then you get where you think you're going but you're not? Hello? And your eyes are open and you're surrounded by your enemy? All right. You'd be thinking, whoa, there's something different about this group. As they use the blind. You see, the way that God does things is different from the way that we do things. All right. And sometimes he's going to ask you to trust him even when you don't understand what he's doing. God's word is going to show you a better way to do what needs to be done. 
God's word is going to show you the right way, the holy way, the blessed way. He's going to show you the best way. And the way that he shows you will always bring glory and honor and praise to the Father above. Isaiah 30, verse 21. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. John 13, 34, and 35, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. 1 John 2, 8 through 10. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother yes. is in darkness even until now. Amen. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. It's amazing how love turns the situation around Amen. for the glory of the Lord. Amen. When we obey the instructions of God's word, other people will know that God loves them and that we love them. Amen. See, we want people to know they're loved. We want people to know they're loved by God and loved by us. Romans 12, 20, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt be coals of fire on his head. Right. It says in Matthew 5, 44, But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you, do good and that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Amen. Oh, that's going to stretch you, saints. It's easy to love the lovely, right. but to love the unlovely, to love those that are coming at you and attacking you and accusing you. Right. Hello. But Jesus said, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Yes. Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Amen. When someone is coming at you and taking advantage of you, the scripture says pray for them. Amen. Amen. Pray for them, not plot against them. Amen. Pray for them. Amen. I'm reading the word careful here. <laughs> but I say unto you, love your enemies. Yes. Yes. See, see, you need to hear this, saints. Yes. They have made you their enemy. You haven't made them your enemy. Amen. That's the difference. Amen. Your job is to love them. Amen. The Bible doesn't instruct us to do things so that the world will be destroyed. The Bible instructs us to do things so that the things of the, and the people of the world will know that God is moving. That God loves them. That he loves you. And that he's faithful. So we walk with God. We walk in faith. We walk victorious through the world by living in the Word. We stop doing things the world's way and we look at things God's way. And then we find it's easier to listen to and obey God when He tells us to do something. When you show the world the love of God, then you're listening to and obeying God's Word. And it's always good to love others. Today is a good day to walk with God. Today is a good day to walk with God. Let's sing a little chorus. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Well, now look what the Lord has done. He healed my body when he touched my mind. Yes, he saved me and it was just in time. I thank you today, Father, for your love, your grace, your favor, your anointing, your purpose, Father, and your power moving in our hearts and lives. Father, let your spirit flow and your grace abound that you would be magnified. Father, direct us, keep us, and bless us as we honor you and put you first. And lead us, Father, in the place that you want us to go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Be friendly, saint, shake hands, and bless one another. Oh, Father, and so that should be my cutting, even though I didn't.